Namaste. <laughs> so, it's so weird and it happens every time. Every time I start a new series that's based on some authentic scripture, everybody runs away. Where did they go? Huh? Just in the last few days, our views are down 66%. because I'm doing Lakshmi Tantra. Everybody's afraid of scripture. What's the matter, you might learn something? <laughs> I have a little bit of a cold, so you're gonna see me in my joisy accent. I got the, the stuffy doze. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's like people come here to this channel for entertainment. They want to see this crazy old man from India talk about stuff and maybe we'll be able to get some secrets. Huh? Secrets mean some mind candy. Some flip phrase, you know, that I can use on other people to make them think I know something. Or maybe if some people are a little more advanced. They think, oh, I'll get some secret technique. You know, and then I can have a shortcut to enlightenment. I don't know how many times I got to say it. There aren't any shortcuts to enlightenment. And the real secrets, the real mind candy is in the scriptures. When I just ad lib, you know, when I just free form rap like this, I have no idea what I'm going to say. You know, it's like, I'm just making this up as I go along. But when I do something based on scriptures, I do my homework. I do, I put hours of study into it and analysis and thinking and relating it to my experience and so on. The real value is in the Lakshmi Tantra series, not in this stuff. Huh? But as long as you're here, permit me to blow your mind. It's like this. The scientists have it bass backwards. What do I mean by that? For those of you who aren't from New York, <laughs> bass backwards is a New York slang phrase for ass backwards. <laughs> In other words, they got the whole thing completely wrong. What does science say? In the beginning was a big bang, kaboom, and all this stuff came into being all of a sudden. Poof, huh? They don't, they won't want to hear about what was before that. <laughs> but anyway, then now all that energy is gradually coalescing into matter and stars and planets and galaxies, but over a long period of time, it's all going to wind down like a clock, see? And this is called the mechanistic model of the universe. It's also called entropy. Entropy means any system that contains matter and energy gradually winds down towards zero energy and zero information. So, we see, like if you wind up a clock, right? It gives you information, tells you what time it is. But gradually the spring winds down, and then at some point it just stops. But that's the scientist's idea, and it hasn't changed in like, I don't know, 500 years since the horse and buggy days. And it's wrong. It's so completely wrong. How is it wrong? Look at nature. What happens in nature? A tree or another plant makes seeds, right? Little tiny seeds, and they go in the ground, and another tree comes up. Like the banyan tree. The banyan tree is the biggest tree on the planet. Some of them cover like literally square miles of area. One tree. But the banyan tree seed is like a mustard seed. It's this tiny little thing. Huh? From that tiny little seed, a whole banyan tree can grow. 
So we well animals, human beings, right? Kittens come from cats, puppies come from dogs, <laughs> children come from humans. I think most of the time anyway. And then they grow up to be scientists and then they turn the whole thing around backwards and they say, no, this whole thing is just a clockwork mechanism and it's going to wind down. Ignoring the fact that the scientists themselves are a perfect example of reverse entropy. The scientists are creating more and more knowledge, more and more understanding, more and more information, and they're able to handle more and more energy and organize it into useful functions. Isn't it? That's technology. So the scientists are making their science and technology as a perfect example of reverse entropy, but then they want to say, no, the universe can't do that. The universe is just dumb clockwork machinery. Huh? What a bunch of idiots. Das backwards. So we've all been taught that <laughs> you start out with a, a cloud of dust and gas that comes from the Big Bang or whatever. And somehow or other that coalesces into planets and stars. And then the planets start going around the stars and the stars get together and a galaxy is created, right? And then galaxies make clusters and blah, 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 blah. But, but the whole thing is just a clockwork, huh? It's just happening like robotics, right? <laughs> Idiots. Now, when I was 18, 19 years old, I came across the Russian mystic George Gurdjieff. Gurdjieff is a wonderful big brain huh you read any of his stuff you want to expand your mind you want some mind candy huh read Gurdjieff especially his masterwork all and everything Beelzebub's tales to his grandson <laughs> you'll get some mind candy all right and one of the things he says one of the things the most mind-blowing thing that he says in there is that a planet, if he plays his cards right, can grow into a star. A moon can become a planet. An asteroid can become a moon. A star can get together with a bunch of other stars, make a globular cluster, and gradually grow into a galaxy. See, they get a bunch of stars and they, they all go and find a black hole and they get together around it and then they start accreting matter, making more stars and so on until they turn into a galaxy. And then galaxies get together. Like right now, the Andromeda galaxy is so in love with our Milky Way galaxy that they're closing together at some incredible 200,000 kilometers per hour or something like some incredible speed like that. Huh? And in a matter of two or three billion years, they're going to be <laughs> making babies. <laughs> so, see, I was a physics prodigy in high school and I got a full scholarship to MIT. But I wanted to take astrophysics, but they wanted me to take nuclear physics and I didn't want to build bombs. So I blew it off. I went to music school instead. But I still have a, a big interest in physics and astrophysics especially, and I follow all the scientific papers. So the, the model that they're using is completely wrong. You know, most of the stuff they observe is true, but then they fit it into this model that's completely bass backwards, huh? that the universe is winding down. Come on. Huh? Look at life. <laughs> Look at this planet. Look at the astounding variety of living creatures and how they're self-perpetuating by the laws of nature. Now, as above, so below, right? Hermetic principle. So if it's happening here on this scale, where we can see it with our kind of dull senses and minds, then what about bigger scales? What about smaller scales? 
Here's one for you. Talk about mind candy. The Bhu Mandala. The Bhu Mandala is a description of our solar system given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. I'll put a link to it down in the video description. And basically the Bhu Mandala says the solar system is a bunch of concentric circular islands separated by oceans of different materials. Water, salt water, fresh water, sugar cane juice, milk, huh? <laughs> honey, and so on. What does this mean? You know, what were the guys who wrote that scripture smoking? <laughs> Give me some, you know. But several scientists have taken a crack at trying to explain this, or rather rationalize it out of existence. But you know what? Again, they get it completely bass backwards. When we look at a, uh, an atom, an atom is a nucleus surrounded by concentric rings of electron bands. Now, if we look at an atom, do we see there's a, a little rock in the center and these other the smaller rocks going around? No, no. What we see is a band of probability of where the electron is likely to be at any given time. <laughs> Why? Because the difference in time scale between the atom and ourselves is so vast, you know. In the, in the time it takes for me to go like this, an electron will go around its nucleus umpteen gazillion times. So trying to find the exact location of an atom for us is impossible because our time scale is so much greater than the atoms. So all we see are these rings of probability, concentric rings of probability. Boing! So what is the Bhu Mandala? When you become self-realized, you go from the gross creation to the subtle creation, from the manifest to the unmanifest, from the uh, concrete to the virtual creation. This is described in Lakshmi Tantra. Anybody can read it. Anybody can think about it. Well, what does it mean? Well, when you go to the uh, virtual world, the virtual creation, time slows down. And the difference in time between our experience and the experience of those who live in this subtle world is approximately equivalent to the difference between the, the time of the atom and the time of human beings. So if you went to that world and you look back at our solar system, what are you going to see? Concentric bands of probability of the position of a planet. Duh. I mean, ISKCON had like three PhDs working on this problem for over 10 years, and they couldn't come up with an answer. You know, I actually thought of it right away, but I didn't say anything to those guys because I knew they wouldn't listen to me. Let them waste their time. But I knew. Anyway, not many people will be able to understand this. Not many people will even watch this video until this point because the average view is about six or seven minutes max. Uh, people think the grass is greener on the other side. Oh, he's not going to give me the secret. He's not going to give me the shortcut. I'm going to go listen to somebody else. And they're gone. But I always save the best for last, right? <laughs> I always save the best for last. So <laughs> this creation is going through evolution, evolution and devolution, expansion and contraction, manifestation and unmanifestation in cycles of tremendously long time periods. So 
Of course, from the point of view of those who create this universe, it's going to look very different than from the point of view that we have. Our time horizon is like, you know, next week at the most, right? <laughs> Their time horizon is like the next creation. Hundreds of billions of years from now. You know, so everything they see is going to be different. But, you know, people have small minds. They think everything has to be like they see it. And they're very attached to that view. So the best model the scientists can come up with is mechanics. But that's not the truth. Actually, everything is alive. Look, the sun, the sun can come up with prominences, huge explosions of gas, electrically charged plasma. And in fact, it does it all the time. Folks, what is it? This is a rocket engine. This is an electronuclear rocket engine run by fusion. It can push itself in any direction it wants. It can even nudge the planets into get them if they get out of order. See, because they all have electromagnetic fields, and it can just send a little squirt of plasma out there, huh, and knock them back in line. See, and so if the sun can do it, if a planet has an electronic field, you know they can do it, right? Why is the Earth pulsating every? What is it? 6.67 .6 seconds or something like that. Nobody knows. Well, duh, it's the heartbeat. Or something like that. See, the Earth is alive. The Sun is alive. The galaxy, my God, how can anything that huge not be intelligent? Not be alive? Not be capable of self-adjustment, self-regulation? Just like, you know, when I get a little sick, I know just the right herbs to get, you know, and within a day or two, it's over. So, you know, the galaxy knows how to adjust itself and keep itself in balance, and so does the sun. So that's why I say the scientists have it completely bass backwards. But what does it do to us? It gives us this fatalistic point of view that, oh, everything's going to wind down and it's just going to degenerate and die, you know? <laughs> well, maybe it is for those who believe that. But like I uh, said in the butterfly or chrysalis video, that this body is just a chrysalis. It's just a pupa. And inside, the subtle body is going through transformation. And when this thing is finished, it cracks open and the butterfly comes out. If the transformation is successful. And then that being has a whole new degree of freedom, a whole new dimension of possibility that the caterpillar never had. And it's the same in spiritual life. But... You're not going to get that. You're not going to be able to complete that transformation without accurate information on how to do it. So that's why we go through the scriptures and we depend on them because we found that they're dependable. They give the real knowledge and it works. So I'm going to continue with Lakshmi Tantra. Y'all do whatever you're going to do, you know. That's your responsibility. My responsibility is to give the highest knowledge that I know. And so that's what I'm going to do. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.